Yoast SEO is not going to change your SEO skills. You need to have a certain list of SEO skills first. You need to be able to write a blog post in a way that Google really likes first. Yoast SEO comes in second. It should not be the first line of defense between your blog post and SEO. Hey, my friends, and welcome to the Mike and Laura Travel Channel. This is Laura. She's an SEO and marketing expert, a well-recognized consultant in the travel blogging industry, and the CEO of Scale Your Travel Blog. It is more in-depth. We provide more information, and we provide more information that people want. Answers when you need the most. Let's dive right in. Gotten a lot of the same responses and questions about this, and it's about the plugin Yoast SEO. Okay, so a lot of times I'll ask people, "Great, um, how's your website doing?" You know, "Oh, well, I'm I'm still growing it. I'm trying. I'm doing Pinterest. I have an Instagram. All this stuff." And I say, "That's that's great." But do you know what SEO is? And a lot of times people will reply, and I did the same thing. I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing with you because I was in the same position. A lot of people will respond and say, oh, yeah, I have SEO. I have Yoast SEO um, installed, and I make sure that all the green lights are green. I cannot tell you how many times I have heard this. And like I said, I was the same way. But the thing is that Yoast SEO is not going to change your SEO skills. You need to have a certain list of SEO skills First, you need to be able to write a blog post in a way that Google really likes first. Yoast SEO comes in second. It should not be the first line of defense between your blog post and SEO. Yoast SEO is a simple checklist. So this is how I use it. First, I write my blog post the exact same way that I showed you in the deep dive training. I write it out make sure that I include my keyword in all of the right places. Um, And of course, this is after the keyword research, finding the right topics to talk about that your readers, your travel blog readers are actually looking for. Then I write my post using my SEO skills. Then at the end, you see the little Yoast SEO button. Maybe it's this side. I think the camera's flipped. (laughs) So you see it on your right side of the blog post. You'll see where you can click on Yoast SEO and make sure that you have done things right. But here's the kicker. Yoast SEO is actually wrong a lot of the time. And that is also true for rank math. And so you do have to be careful about this because some of the things are just not important and some of the things are just wrong. And so what I'm going to do right now, um, I know that this is hard because it's not in front of you and you're just seeing me talking, but I want to go through the Yoast SEO plugin and tell you what you want to pay attention to and what you might want to just completely ignore. Um, And I'll tell you this right now, having a green light on your blog post doesn't mean anything, nothing. In fact, the blog posts that I've done the best and the ones that send the most traffic to my site are actually sad red faces. (laughs) So it's okay if your Yoast SEO plugin isn't green lighted. In fact, you want to First, use your first line of defense, which is your own SEO skills, then check Yoast just as a checklist. So this is what I'll do. I go through the um, SEO analysis. There are two drop downs for Yoast SEO, and the first one is readability analysis. Ignore that one. It doesn't matter if he if they give you a sad red face. Don't worry. This is these are just suggestions. Do not take these into consideration. But the SEO analysis part, the drop down that says SEO analysis, this one does help you in certain ways. So I'm going to go through it. Okay. Now it will tell you different problems you have with your blog post, and then it will tell you the improvements that you can make, and then it'll tell you good results. So the first one, mine says, 
there is a problem. It says that my SEO title width is larger than the viewable limit, and they want me to make my title of my blog post shorter. No, I want, <laughs> I want to make sure my title is descriptive, not too long, but decent size, and all that really matters is that I'm using my keyword in the title. So ignore that one. If it tells you, hey, it's wider than the viewable limit, it's okay, just ignore it. Okay, the next one, improvements. Mine says, all outbound links on this page are no followed. So what they're trying to encourage you to do is in your blog post, they want you to link to other websites that might be helpful for your readers. And I do, in all of my blog posts, I always include some type of outbound link. But if a link is associated with money in any way, if it's an affiliate link, I want to make sure that that link is no followed. And I'll explain that further in um, more training, but just have that in your head that there are do follow links and no follow links. And basically what it means to no follow a link is that Google will just ignore that link. And we want them to ignore any link that has to do with a money exchange. So any Amazon links that might go to, um, that might earn you money through affiliate marketing, they should be no followed. Okay, so this one tells me that I shouldn't have only no followed. They said add some normal links. I'm not going to because all of the outbound links on this blog post specifically are affiliate links. And so I don't need to add any other ones. It doesn't improve the um, it doesn't improve the blog post in any way. So I'm going to ignore that the outbound links ignore. It. Um, the next one says key phrase in title and it says the exact match of the focus key phrase appears in the SEO title because it's supposed to, right? We include our keyword in our title, but not at the beginning. And it tells me, move it to the beginning for the best results. Uh -uh. No, no, no. I am going to keep, of course it does, um, it does help, but it also doesn't help. If you can put it at the, if you can put your keyword at the front of your blog post title, cool. But if you can't and it doesn't sound right, then don't worry about it. Just include it in your title somewhere. So that's something to remember about keywords in titles. Um, if it tells you you need to move your key phrase to the beginning of the title, ignore it. That's something you can ignore. Okay. The next one says internal links, and this is giving me a green light for internal links. It says there are both no followed and normal internal links on this page. Good job. Right. So internal links, like I've told or like I've said before, are any links that you include in a blog post that lead the reader to another blog post that you've written on the same website. So for me, it would be um, maybe I write a blog post about hidden gems in Steamboat Springs. My Another one that I could include in that article and say, hey, you might also like, it's probably something to do with Steamboat. And it is important to have those internal links. So keep that in mind. Internal links are good. And um, when... Yoast asks you to add internal links, you will want to do that before you publish your post because internal links are very important. Okay, the next one says the key phrase is in the introduction, well done. Now that's something we talked about in the training. Having your keyword in the first paragraph of your blog post. That is important. Not only does it tell your readers what they're going to be reading about, but it also helps Google understand what your blog post is about. So that is important, yes. You should include your key phrase in your in introduction. However, if it's not in the first paragraph, you're going to get a notification from Yoast saying, hello, it's not in the introduction. It's okay if it's in the second paragraph or the third paragraph. As long as it's within the first, I would say, 
100 to 150 words, as long as your key phrase is in there, then you're fine. If this tells, if Yoast tells you, hey, it's not in your introduction, but you have it within the first 100 words, you're fine. Ignore that part of Yoast. Okay, the next one says key phrase length, and it says good job. Um, our key phrases are going to range. We've already found that out through doing some keyword research that some keywords for our travel blogs are going to be short and some are going to be long. Ignore this part of Yoast. If it's telling you, hey, your key phrase length is too long or it's too short, just ignore it. We know more about keywords and the ones that are important for our blog than Yoast does. So just ignore that one, doesn't matter. Okay, the next one, key phrase density. This is an important one and it does tell you that, hey, you should be using your key phrase a bit more throughout your blog post. Um, you've only used it this many times, Based on how much you've written, you should have used it this many times. So that is something I do kind of look at. If I can't fit it into my blog post naturally, then just ignore it. But it is a good indication like, hey, maybe I should try and put it in where it might fit and try to get it out there a bit more so that it's more obvious what my blog post is about. Okay, so the next one, and it looks like we're almost done. We just have maybe six left, but they'll go quickly. Um, key phrase in your meta description, important. That one should be green. You should have your key phrase or keyword in your meta description. It's important. Okay, the next one, meta description length. They gave me a green light for this one, but a lot of times I don't get a green light on this one because... The meta description is more about the reader than it is about the length. So you want your meta description to be one to three sentences um, and something that really captivates your reader and gets them interested and excited to read more about your post as opposed to somebody else's travel blog post. So that is not important. Sorry, I'm shaking my head like it's important. And that one's not important as long as you make it very clear what your blog post is about in your meta description, you're good. Okay, the next one, previously used key phrase. You have not used this key phrase before. Very good. Yeah, that's important. You definitely don't want to be targeting the exact same key phrase or keyword for multiple blog posts. They should be about different topics. But here's the thing. I could target um, Steamboat Springs hiking as one of my key phrases, one of my blog posts. And then I could target Steamboat Springs hot springs for another one. So they're not the same, they're different topics, but they're similar. Um, and it shouldn't show up as them being the same in your Yoast plugin, but just know that you should always have a new topic for every blog post. Okay, the next one, key phrase and subheading. So the subheadings are the ones that we talked about, how you can get them from Google, can you can find the best headings and subheadings from Google and other results in Google. Um, this one says eight of your H2 and H3 subheadings reflect the topic of your copy. Good job. Okay, so this is one I try to focus a little bit on. I do try to include my keyword in quite a few headings if they fit. Remember, if they fit. And um, it's important because you definitely want to make sure that it's very obvious this is the keyword that you're going for and this is it's very obvious that this is the topic of the blog post. So that is one that I do look at, the key phrase and subheading. Um, but again, like I said, if it doesn't fit in naturally, don't force it. Okay, the next one, alt, uh, image alt attributes. That is important. You do want your image um, alternative text to include a bit of, or at least, you know, at least a couple of your images include your key phrase in the alt image um, description. Okay, two more, text length. The text contains, my, this one contains 1800 words, which is actually a pretty short post for me. Now, the interesting part about this on Yoast is that 
they will give you a green light for text length as if you reach 300 words. And that blows my mind because nowhere on the internet or at least very few places on the internet, can you find a blog post that has 300 words that's going to rank on Google for a keyword? It just doesn't happen. Like, it might happen if you're a business insider or, you know, if you're a CNN traveler or something like that. But as new travel bloggers, we cannot afford to write skimpy blog posts. Your blog post all of your blog posts should be at least 1,500 words, um, and if not more. So what I try to aim for is 2,000 words for each blog post of relevant information, but a lot of times I find myself writing a you know 5,000 word blog posts. It has to be comprehensive, and you have to be the go-to person for that topic, and then you'll rank on Google for it. So ignore the text length one because this is completely crazy that they give you a green light if you have 300 words. There, you should never, ever, ever write a blog post that's under 800 words. There's just no point in doing that. So be sure to spend that time on your blog post. Make sure it's comprehensive so that people don't have other questions and go elsewhere and other blogs to find the answer because then you're blog post will drop in Google rankings. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. <laughs> this is crazy. Okay. Um, the next one is key phrase in slug. More than half of your key phrase appears in the slug. That's great. So that's what Yoast is telling me. Now, the funny thing about this is it says more than half of your key phrase appears in the slug. We want our exact key phrase to be our slug. And if you don't know what a slug is, um, it's the tail end of your URL. So for example, if my blog post is about Steamboat Springs hiking, my slug would be, um, well, my URL would be mikeandlauratravel.com slash steamboat dash springs dash hiking. So that part that says steamboat dash springs dot dash hiking, that's your slug. And you do need to have your keyword that you picked strategically, remember, um, you do need that as your slug. However, you do want, usually you want the whole keyword as your slug. And so this one is kind of weird telling me that more than half of my keyword appears in the slug. Yeah, that is good because it should be your entire keyword, keyword or key phrase. Okay, so that's kind of a bit about um, Key, uh, using Yoast SEO in your blog posts and how it's really important to use it as just a checklist. I mean, it should not be, you know, your first source of SEO that you should have the skills to write the post first and then go to Yoast when you're finished writing and just double check everything. Did I did I forget to put in a meta description? Did I forget to do alt image descriptions? That is what Yoast and Rank Math are for. So just because you have it on your site and just because it gives you a green light doesn't mean anything. Um, so that is why you've got to make sure you know your SEO in order to have a successful travel blog. We do need to keep uncovering everything that is important with SEO because that is the foundation of your travel blog. And if you can master SEO, which you can, because I promise you it's not that hard. If you can master SEO, not only will you have a successful travel blog, but you'll also be able to create any website. Doesn't matter the niche. Use these SEO skills and grow your blog or website, whatever you want it to be. All right, guys, I hope you have a fantastic weekend. If you do have any more questions or you're not watching this live, totally cool. Leave them in the comments and I'll answer them to the, the best of my ability as fast as I can. So I'm here, use me, use me, use me. I promise I'm giving you the information you need.